Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us tonight here on the Schoolhouse to the State House podcast. As you know, my name is Crystal Dillard, and I am a candidate for state representative in District 131 here in Houston. And um, I love District 131. It encompasses a lot of Southwest Houston, a lot of um, of the uh, area out close to to the Beltway and the Pearland area, Missouri City area. I grew up in that area, and I am a native Houstonian and a proud Houstonian. We're gonna cut a little bit off of our um, off of our master plan today because we really felt it was important for us to address some things that have been happening in the community within the last week and without me even saying it I know that you probably know exactly what I'm talking about but with us trying to reach out to the Houston community with us really trying to engage Millennials, Gen Z, Gen X, um, people in the political process, we would be remiss if we didn't speak on the tragedy that happened here last week at the Astroworld event. Today, I have got some guests with me who can lend some insight from three different perspectives about what happened. And at the end of the day, what we're going to try to ask, the question that we're going to try to really get to the bottom of is whether or not we feel that the demographic that was at the concert, are they really poised to lead us politically, socially into the 21st century. And we've got some different perspectives here. My guests today, now, of course, I know they are because I am an eternal optimist. I believe that they are. But we want to look at some different perspectives and maybe get a little bit of insight into exactly what possibly could have happened. We may have some guests who have been at uh, events like that before and have seen uh, similar things, maybe not go to that extent, but I'm going to let them jump right in. I'm going to allow my guests to introduce themselves and I'm going to start to my, that's my left hand. Okay. Start to my right. <laughs> I'm going to go all the way uh, to my right. And that's going to be um, Carl Mays. Yes, I am Carl Mays, uh, the King Motivator, National Motivational Speaker, as well as National Entertainer. And uh, man, ready for this discussion tonight. Shout out to Crystal Dillon. Thank you, Carl. Thank you, Carl. Okay, I'm going to go ahead to, and I'm looking at my screen and everything is exactly the opposite. So I'm thinking <laughs> that it's to my left, but actually my next guest is to my right. So tell us who you are, my next guest. Hi, this is Pop Darby. I'm a, a intellectual property strategist, cultural influencer. People call me an activist and all these other words, but I'm just a man walking with purpose. That's right. Awesome. And on the end? Righty, and uh, I'm John Sinclair. I used to work with Miss Dillard at the school, and now I work in uh, investment management at Fidelity. Awesome. And the reason that I especially earmarked these three gentlemen to be here is because John is very He's very humble and he would not say that he is a political, a very savvy um, millennial Gen, Gen X political <laughs> pundit, but he is. He knows politics. He knows what's going on um, in the world and he knows what's in the head of a lot of his peers out there. A lot of them probably were at the concert and it's hard for me to maybe wrap my mind around um, how things could get to that degree. But we spoke a little bit about this last night and he said it's not so far fetched for things to go to that to that particular place. And uh, Pop, can you tell me a little bit about your background um, walking in your purpose, especially becoming involved politically here in Houston? Uh, so I guess. I was on my podcast in probably 2019 and I interviewed uh, Deidre Mathis. She was running for mayor. And I asked her like, who run for mayor? Cause I, I always feel like the money makes the most impact. And I told her that you can either be a kingmaker or a king and a kingmaker really is more important because they move the pieces in the background. You still able to move how you need to move. And she kind of convinced me like, it's not really what you think it is. We went to city hall and she put my name on the list couple months later, I was talking to my homeboy, Rashad Cave. He was running for the city council. And he was like, 
running for city council against Scarface. Woo, 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 woo. I started looking at the list of people he was running against, and my name was on it. And I forgot that she had put my name on the list. So then I kind of went to the city, had a conversation about like the requirements, what was necessary, what was needed. And I felt like they were trying to play me because I wasn't even going to run. But since they tried to play me, I was like, all right, they think I won't run because I was young. I'm black. I tattoos. You know what I'm saying? I went in there looking regular. Right. Uh, I ain't even going to say regular. I probably had three, four chains on that day. I had on my rollers out there. They probably like, man, this good. Ain't finna run. So, uh, yeah, I ended up running for city council and just learning a lot of the inner workings of what was going on inside of the city. Uh, really, when I look at our culture, uh, Malcolm X had a speech called The Bullet of the Ballot. And when he talked about how we are just purely our political climate, we're not savvy enough to understand that we could pick people from our rankings that can represent us. And we don't at all. And just running, it kind of even gave me a big experience of it because I think maybe 20 percent of the people that were eligible to vote could. Right. And then 14 percent of those were under 45. Yes. And I was in my 20s at the time. I'm 31 now. So I'm like, you know what? So, this ain't it's really we not even adapting to the culture because we feel like it's not for us. You know, right. so if I took a picture of this room right now and showed it to everybody, the first thing we're going to look at is ourselves in that picture. Right. Mm -hmm. right. So most people don't see themselves in a picture politically. They, feel, they don't feel like they matter. So they just not even going to participate. Right. Right. You know right. Yeah. Now, Carl, let yeah. me let me kind of uh, turn to you and ask you this. Tell me a little bit about what has you are an event promoter you are someone who goes out and and you are actually your own your own best product because you're probably one of the best motivational speakers that i have ever ever seen and heard what made you have such a penchant for wanting to really be able to motivate uh the generations that you talk to and that you go in and uh and speak to and that's a lot of the younger people well I think the uh, the most important thing is, you know, having a care factor to realize that, um, you know, there's something I live by where I say, um, you know, what we do today affects people that are not even born yet. Right. So that's a responsible responsibility. So when you think about a responsibility, like every move I make, everything that I do, and I'm looking at this from the eye of other individuals as well. I tell people your responsibility even with your experience, whether good or bad, whatever whatever outcome you get, whatever you decide to do, just remember when you make a decision to be able to do it, you're not only affecting people at this moment, you're making decisions for people that are not even born yet. Right. So that's that's the stance that I stand on. And I always say that if you're a person that understands life, life is a selfless act right. in itself. And the biggest selfless act that one can do in this life is to be able to get married and have children just, just across the board. Because it's the most selfless thing that you could ever do. And inside of that, you do many other selfless things. But remember, selfish people do the, that those two selfless acts. Right. And if you can't and if you cannot be selfless in them, you're not going to be able to see it all the way through. You're going to have those selfish moments that are going to make make those things deteriorate. So in life, with it being the biggest selfless act that one could commit, you have to be the most selfless person ever. And so I believe that every move that I make is not for me. It's for others that are not even here. Absolutely. Well, let's go back a week ago today. Uh. A week ago today, we have people flying in from all over the country. Mm -hmm. We have people world. driving in from all over Texas. Mm -hmm. People bringing their families. People bringing their loved ones. A lot of people, the age of your son, mm -hmm. excited. One of the best rappers out there is coming to town. This is his hometown. And no one could have anticipated, probably, that we'd be sitting in this space that we're in right now at this time last week. What happened to bring us to this space? I want to get each of your perspectives on this. We'll start with John. What do you think happened to bring us here? Uh, man, well, the type of people who go to a concert like that are typically going to be a younger crowd. Um, as you probably saw, a lot of people were in high school, even some of the age groups of the people who got affected, young as 14. Mm -hmm. um, and you have to imagine, I mean, we've all been to music festivals before. You got alcohol, drugs, everybody's kind of having their kind of a good time uh, doing those kind of things if they want to. Um, so when you have a mass mix of people like that, as well as uh, those other factors kind of stimulating them, and then a very, kind of a lack of 
I guess we'll call it security or just kind of oversight. It's usually just a pile of people and there's a very limited <laughs> um, support staff and yeah. people kind of keep an order right. of things like that at these kind of concerts. Um, and really look at the companies who are running them. That's because they're, that's not necessarily a revenue producing activity for them. That's not making them money. So they'll, they'll short staff it. They'll understaff it as much as they can. Yeah. Um, and obviously that was kind of something that led to what happened later on in the night. Uh, Pop, could you foresee something like this happening based on what you've, you've seen in the past with different types of events that have come to Houston of that magnitude? I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's a couple of events that come to Houston where everybody gets kind of amped up for everybody to go out out for. You got Astroworld, you got Drake's uh, Hall weekend, and then you got James Harden weekend. Okay. Everybody go, trying to go to every single event, but the right. difference between Astroworld is the age group. You know what I'm saying? Okay. It's not just the crowd. It's it's not just the club crowd. It's really for yeah. it, it's it's for kids because it's right. events there that's rise. It's like a carnival. Yeah. And uh, true. I went. I was there. I went. Yeah. And. I went to a lot of the Astro Worlds. I yeah. went to the last it's annual. So I went to last year's. I didn't go to the first one. How was it different? Uh it wasn't really different. The mm -hmm. only thing was Travis Scott performs and his purpose is not to create a performance, it's to have an experience. Okay. So when you go there, they there for that experience, right. but it was uh fire, it was fireworks, it was flames, it was big screens. All kind of pyrotechnics and stuff. Yeah, 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 all of that. And uh and it's a crowd of 50,000 people that bought tickets, let alone a fence got ran mm -hmm. over where another probably 10 to 20,000 people came in. Were you ever in fear when you were there? No, nah, I wasn't in fear, but I know what go on. Like it's, it's a, it's a thing they call a mosh pit, right? right. Mosh pits are. And, and explain and what that is. So if people are a mosh sure. pit is basically at maybe a rock concert or really even at rolling loud, everybody come perform that music might not even go to the mosh pit, right. okay. but they basically clear space and people are just throwing bowls, kicking, punching, screaming. They might, it might be somebody in there with a bloody nose. It might be oh somebody coming out with a black eye. And that's oh. Travis Scott. Travis Scott's crowd, right? He right. his he uh, is the self-proclaimed ragers, but he's like yes. the king of the ragers, right. right? Right. So you don't think that it's not gonna happen, but you don't you think that it, it would go to that type of level, right? So the thing that was different about this weekend was, mm -hmm. I guess, because of all of the the fire and fireworks and heat, it was so hot in the midst of all of those people yeah. that people started to pass out, but. I wouldn't even place blame on Travis Scott because I know when you're on stage, first off, they got music in their ear. Right. They rapping, it's lights everywhere. And he did stop the crowd for a moment to say, like, it's somebody right. I could see passed out right here. And then they're depending on others to let them know. Yeah, what's, what's going, going on. on. Yeah. And I was there and I couldn't, I didn't see that people was done. Really? I, it was just people everywhere. It ain't like I'm yeah. looking around like it's eight people down. It's just wow, people everywhere. Because, you don't know. Because literally, are, are you saying, because this is how people were kind of describing it, that most people who were in the center part may have had their hands up and they're, yeah. they're, they're going I mean, really down. everywhere. Then it's a mosh pit in the middle where that's all they're doing oh, is, yeah, is right. throwing elbows, swinging. Like he had an interview so one time where he was pit, saying he expected to see blood. You. I'm going to stop you, Pop, because you got to explain this to me. A mosh pit means that you can go out there and just start swinging at people? Are they that, not actually. <laughs> or is that, does that mean? Does that mean? I, I wouldn't say. Yeah, you all could get it. Help me with this. I wouldn't say they're actually out there trying to fight. Right. But they being as rowdy as possible. Yeah. yeah. You get what okay. I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. It's, 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 a, it's a very aggressive form of celebration yeah. if somebody get punched it ain't really Man, surprising so, yeah wow okay yeah, yeah, okay yeah. So, okay. So, so so in this don't don't try to understand it. Okay. <laughs> just, just think about just know. people pushing you right okay right in all okay. directions yeah and that's the fun part and you pushing people too everybody okay. you see you trying to push but that's just okay. a certain part of the crowd so i'm not even gonna say that's what they yeah, were right, because yeah. i don't think that's what they were yeah right from what i heard it was people passing out and people walking on them getting trampled over but yeah in my mind i'm like if you were an adult or if you were a kid, you feel you stepping on somebody. Right. Of course. You can feel it under your now, foot. Now, yeah. at some point, you got to be like, hey, everybody, stop. Yeah. Somebody down here. Yeah. Right. But, right. And I, I feel like that's what they were saying. I seen some videos online where people were getting carried out. And yeah. some of the times, that's what was happening. But now, I don't think people really expected anybody to be done. They expected every time people pass out every year. Yeah. Right. You know what right. I'm saying? So I think that's what they thought it was. But this year, we have the fentanyl uh yes. explosion right so now a lot of people are out there taking uh percocets uh yes. lined with fentanyl and right. that uh, a lethal dose of fentanyl is probably like a, a little more than that exactly piece of land exactly so 
you got people out there selling pills. You right. got people out there, you know, the news reported yeah. somebody was yeah. poking people. Right. And then uh, if you follow Travis Scott or even look at how he presents his experiences, right. if you know what, like, the esoteric history of, like, ancient civilizations or right. paintings, right. he plays with the occult a lot. Yes. And when yes. you play in those yes. realms, you know, you start pulling, you, you you start pulling things goes. that you don't have yeah. control over. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. I'm going to turn to you now, Carl, because... You are a parent mm -hmm. and you are a parent of a son that is right in that age group. And mm -hmm. I'm sure that probably was something that he did. He attend. No, he didn't. <laughs> and did you have anything to do with him not attending? I didn't. Uh, okay. I mean, he, he's, he, you know, he likes the music, but uh, he's kind of an introvert. So, he, you know, that's, that's not his space to mm -hmm. be in those crowds so fortunately yes because had he been had it been my my youngest right <laughs> he'd have been want to be up in there you know right. what I mean? so that, that's just a personality difference yeah. however um uh, he and i talked about it and, and he was just like wow you know he understands the the culture of that that particular music that um travis does i mean you know what i'm saying we we jam to the music i mean it's an interesting dichotomy because like like you know you know, Travis Scott is from Houston, right? But he, you know, to us, meaning like those that listen to rap particularly, he's he's not the biggest rap artist. He is yeah. to people in the world, right? But here, you know what I'm saying? If people have to say who their favorite favorite Houston rapper is, his name it wouldn't come be up. right. It doesn't right. come nowhere no. close. Right. However, he's affecting the shift of the Gen Z culture, exactly, and the way that they. So he's merged. You know, rap and 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 rage. You know what I'm saying? And and yes. heavy metal. He's 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 meshed the culture of it while right. still being able to do rap, which is right. which is very, you know, very different and unusual. From a money perspective, and and, and myself being one who who throws shows. I mean, right. all day. I mean, it'd be something I take on. However, we we would have to almost triple our bond. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So so Live Nation, they have it, but at the end of the day, they don't want it from a PR standpoint. Gotcha. They'll they'll have to deal with quite a bit, right? You know what I'm saying. So this is where the bond comes into play, right? You know, you know the shows I do. I mean, it probably maybe a, ten, a, a, a one million to a five million dollar bond is as much as I've probably done, right? Right. right. But, but his show and what it garners, 20. it had you right. know yeah, and, and that million dollar bond, you know, that I get or five million dollar bond that I'll get can run anywhere between one and three million, three thousand, right? Right. One and three thousand dollars. Right. I can just imagine. You know that that that's probably a fifteen to twenty thousand dollar bond period that has to be able to cover that because of the pyrotechnics, because right. of the you know the the things that go on in his show. You know what I'm saying? But you cannot be at that type of show. You cannot be understaffed. Right. You definitely can't be um, you know undermanned as it relates to people possibly. You know, I'll give you an example. The, the chances of of something you know medically being needed at his show is probably higher yeah. than it would be at a generic rap show. Right. Exactly. You, you have those the available, you know, things there to be able to take care of that, but you won't have to have it in the masses that he might need it. Exactly. Because of what he perpetuates. Okay. And and again, it's it, he's right. It is an experience and it's for a particular genre and and generation. Okay. Now with that being said, and I'm gonna let uh um any of you gentlemen jump in and kind of address this because with that being said, do you think that everyone who showed up there mm -hmm. had a ticket to be there? Or is this the type of event that people, people knew they were going to rush and bum rush their way in when they got there, maybe and not have a ticket? Because from what I understand, a lot of uh, What's being said is that the reason that there were so many people there is because so many people were just outside and they didn't even have tickets. And once that gate went down, they just came in. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think uh, if you don't mind me ask, answer it. Yeah, but I don't think that that it probably was the initial intent. <laughs> people, people, you know, you know, everything is organic, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I, I was in D.C. and I was, you know, part of something that went down. We were, we were trying to figure out how to get tickets because it was sold out. Okay. And this is when I was younger, and, and a gate went down. You know, it wasn't that, <laughs> wasn't that many they got in, but it, you know, a couple hundred people slid up in that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying. So, so I don't want to, you know. And again, this is not this is not me promoting that behavior, right? But I'm saying yeah, it's kind of organic. I like walking. We don't we 
you know, push the gate down. You know, right, I, right. I don't think that that plan was set like that. However, exactly. when it does occur and you're understaffed or undermanned, you know, you I mean, you can't it. get everybody, but right. you can get the gate back up. You know, that's right. If, you, if, right. You're, if you're man, right. Right. However, I do think that there were people that were there with an intent, mm -hmm. not necessarily to be able to get in the gate aspect, but whatever they did it was going to be nefarious. You know, you know yeah, yeah. yeah. The, yeah. Those yeah. things that, that 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 were an anomaly, like like yeah. you know. And again, I don't know how true it is, and I don't know how I saw it, but. You know, people the people injecting being, people. Yeah, with, man, that, that, yeah. that, that's intense. It, it I mean, was a lot intent. of black Air Force energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's exactly. And, yeah. and I think that that when you when you leave your home and you're going, you know, with that with that type of energy, intent. man, yeah, yes. you 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 moving with intent. So, you know, yeah. and, and it's unfortunate. And and, yeah. and then it happens at a space like that that creates that that type of energy you know what i'm saying because and you know he, he's right it has like a cult type feel to it you know uh the things that 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 the indie windows that he throws right mm -hmm. you know what he says in some of the music then then at the same time the that that shirt energy i mean that thing has gotten around what it you had the, the guy going in the blue uh i mean the little figures going in to a door blue coming out red right and they had right. horns on i mean it's right, right like like those little yeah even the setup when you walk yes. around it's like right. an ancient uh painting, painting that exactly. basically represent hell so exactly. it's and right. they say i see you on the other side see you on the other side that's right. exactly right. so it's like where so, am i so, going when i walk yeah. in right. if you don't know <laughs> yeah but if you part of that that, that culture thing. then you like oh yeah this the vibes because yeah. travis scott is not only like a Houston rapper, but you know he's uh, Kylie Jenner's baby father, which yep. makes him be plastered exactly. all over the media. Right, yeah. His right. business moves are with McDonald's and Fortnite right. and Nike right. and Jordan, so it's like you can't not know him as you in the fashion industry. Right. So That's now right. what he right. does becomes part of what culture. is cool. It's culture. Yeah, yeah. John, let me throw this question to you: Do fans, in an instance like this, bear any part of the responsibility? Uh, personal responsibility for them for their own actions yeah and then i guess if you see somebody getting hurt down beneath you are you the kind yeah. of person yeah. that's going to stand up and do something about it or are you right. going to be the person that walks away from it and yeah. unfortunately you know there's a lot of those people are just going to get the hell out of that situation right. Right. without doing anything yeah um so there's responsibility as a good person yeah. but then as there is that kind of is it their fault right not necessarily right yeah that's what about what about you uh pop uh, would I do blame fans, the fans? Do fans have? Well, do fans in this type of situation bear any responsibility for their actions? Like, can they be sued? Well, maybe, me, maybe well, not. Me, but let me make it more specific. Are you are you a father? Yeah, my daughter would, in there, and my son okay. is at practice. Okay, mm -hmm. would you take your children? Would you have taken your children to the concert? Hmm. I can't say no because of the type of person I am. I I know you know how you got a spidey senses. Yes, I got spidey senses. Like I wasn't gonna be in that crowd. I will watch right. from way over there and still have a good time. I don't have right. to be, especially right. if I'm with some kids. I'm not gonna be in the crowd at all. Right, yeah. it's not right. going on. So right. I can't say I wouldn't take them just to be able to to get the experience of going to Astro World because it is a big event. Yeah, but yeah, no, nah, I definitely wouldn't have them in harm's way. Right. Not right. even where it could possibly happen. Right. You know what I'm saying? But oh, as far as the fans, I feel like yeah. some somebody does have a responsibility because like I said, if you stepping on somebody, you know yes. you're stepping on somebody. Yeah. If it's a crowd and it's getting out of hand, somebody know that it's out of hand. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? But it's fifty thousand people. Like I say, the, the city of Houston is staffed with seventy five hundred uh Houston police right. department officers. Mm -hmm. If every police officer that's was there, was they couldn't have stopped nothing. That's right. That's what I was telling you. You know what I'm saying? Students. So I don't even know it's how to how they could hire they enough people they to to make it i mean you could you could be on no and that's where they can partially say the artists have a responsibility because but he has to know what's going on because he could yeah. say hey if somebody fall make sure they get up right, you know what i'm saying but right. you got to be thinking about right. that and it, you in the mode you ain't yeah. not really thinking about that right yeah. carl yeah. would you have taken your son there either your uh you have a a, a six seven year what are the ages uh, of, your, of your sons? Uh, three, nine, and sixteen. Uh, interesting. A All boys. A nine-year-old was one of the. Uh, uh, he was trampled. He was trampled, mm -hmm. and he was one of the casualties, and he is is recovering now and is in a very bad condition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, his father had him on his neck too. Yes. Yeah. Would you have taken your nine-year-old? You know, 
I mean, this is gonna sound probably because he would have wanted to go because it's Travis Scott. It's yeah, fun. but but I think this is gonna sound real pompous. <laughs> I don't know what it sounds like, but because it, it's been a long time since I've attended uh, a concert or a show as a patron. Okay, mm-hmm. right. Uh, so it's hard for me to be able to. You wear a different it, hat. Yes. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. More than likely, you know, you know, I could maneuver if i wanted him to be at the show we didn't have to go that direction exactly mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying right i would have been able to maneuver backstage a, yeah right. you know what i'm saying from that yeah. realm he gets a chance to meet travis that kind of right. thing i mean you know so because i have those kind of you know contacts right. so it's really difficult for me to be able to 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 digest going through the front and a whole bunch of people you know because i already know i've been in that you know what i'm saying and and, and i always think that that you know one of the things that we're all doing and even the people that are watching right. is to be able to navigate this life, you know, with access. Excellent. So we develop Absolutely. a lot of relationships Worth and everything. More than money. Right. 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 You know what I'm saying? In order to be able to develop a particular access in order to navigate a little different, especially for our, our seeds and, you know, other, other people that, you know, we're connected to. Right. So, you know, yeah. generically, probably, uh, realistically, no. Yeah. yeah. So if that answers your, you know, your Be- because you know, also they said that not not just the young man that was injured, but there were there were people there as young as five. People had yeah. four and five years old, yeah. five year olds yeah. at the concert. And my question is is simply this: knowing and Pop addressed this a couple of minutes ago, knowing the type of things that could be going on there, mm-hmm. knowing how the mosh pit type vibe could break out at any place in there. Yeah, 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 yeah. A five-year-old, a eight-year-old, even if you have them on your shoulders, if you are bold in your stomach and you go down, then your child is in harm's way. Yeah. But that's why I say I don't even know if I would blame any of the deaths on a mosh pit because that's the people that they there for that. You know, yeah. you yeah. if you yeah. over there, you there for that. Yeah. Like I like he said, I uh from my community work, right. I get a lot of so I was yes, an all access yes. member right. media. I right. went as media to right. the yes. concert and uh, I was able to go backstage and do all that. Right. He actually, when we, I, he came to elementary school, my daughter's elementary school okay. that she used to go to. And uh, they did Sunnyside court. And I've been working yeah. with the right. Travis Scott foundation for a while, trying to right. get that together because that's my neighborhood. And we kind of yes. create an art district in it, but five and six, I, I even still could see people bringing their kids. It's just you can't be the inside of the, the mix like that. Right. Like, it's a lot of kids that were there that didn't get hurt. They, they had a good time and left, never knowing anything was going on. Right, because you had to be kind of – so explain yeah. explain to me, Pop, because I think a lot of us who haven't had a chance to really see because it's still sequestered off. That mm-hmm. particular area is roped off now because it's basically a crime it's scene. It's a crime scene. Okay, yeah. but kind of explain to us what – what the what the setup was like so when you walked in i most people entered from the south main side is that correct or, or where most people crossed over the bridge like okay. you remember how okay. you used to go to ashworth so they would cross park, over the they bridge park yeah, over yeah, yes, yes. around nlg okay. cross over the bridge and when you get inside really you just see a bunch of people but it's a bunch of setups people selling clothes okay it's like you deco- got vendors it's decorative okay how many stages are we talking about I think it was two stages okay but it was one big stage that everybody okay. came to but it was more than it's a, it's a everywhere is art everything okay. is just art everywhere right. you look is a statue or okay. a painting or a figurine so, so much money was spent oh no nah, they spent some money for yes. sure yes. this is a huge this fifty thousand people paid yeah. 300 right. someone paid 300 dollars right. to get in there that's right. millions of dollars made right you know what i'm saying so there is there was a part inside of uh, of the venue where you could step back if you were there with kids you could mm-hmm. step back and not be a part yeah of i wasn't the... in the mix like that okay it was people by me but i wasn't in the right. crowd i, I don't right. like to be in crowd yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah no no yeah mm-hmm. yeah you, you you have to be able to maneuver you know i, I unfortunately <laughs> the and this is just from what I've read, the way that it's it's being perceived is as if what happened happened kind of all through it. Mm-hmm. That was a that was a uh, an isolated area that was, you know, taking most of the the brunt. I didn't realize that. Yeah, and and but you know again again when you talk about it, you know, from a narrative, you know, uh, standpoint, the way it's written. I mean, you know. 
you know, it's, it's taking its own life. Yeah, it yeah. seemed like it was just it's, mass mayhem it's, it's, everywhere. It's, 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 nah, it's, it's definitely right. what mass mayhem. It yeah, wasn't. Yeah, I'm yeah, glad yeah. that you're making yeah, that clear. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and that, and I think that that that's the way it was perceived. And even when when you all you know called and said you wanted to be able to do a show like this, of course I had to kind of go do some some recon and and and, and get the the facts and understandings together from right. what, what I've noticed. But one thing I can say is. <clears throat> From from a perspective of being on stage and in front of that many you know people, right? Uh, I'm exactly like you know he was saying a second ago when it, it, it it's so much going on you can't see that. Yeah. So even yes. for what he saw when he stopped the show because yeah. I saw the I saw the yeah. right. and he said hey yo there's somebody down there man we gotta help you know that kind of yeah. thing you know right. and that's because right. they were just super close right you know what I'm yeah. right exactly yeah. that's exactly it and and it was very interesting though. It obviously is something that happens at a lot of his shows, right? You know, so right. it's something that happens all the time. And I think that with that happening like that, he went on and continued the show. But to people that weren't there and that have seen, you know, most of the news don't clips, know the context. Right. Right. They they are interpreting it as he was insensitive. Right. Yeah. But this is obviously yeah, yeah, common. Yeah. It is and so it happens common. all the time. I, and I, I looked yeah. at other shows. I looked at other, you know, things that show people bleeding. I mean, yeah. yeah. Just all right. I want to say something that yeah. is not the popular opinion right now. But okay. in that world of ragers, yes. Now they can't wait for the next Travis Scott show. Right. So wow. it just promotes they like, wow. oh yeah, that was. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's what they into. So it's like living it's gore, on the edge. gore, gore right and death. Yeah, yes. yeah, 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 yeah. John, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna yeah, come you back. Had a to hard you. time blaming Travis Scott for some of this. He's the talent. You know what I mean? He's yeah, the guy yeah, on stage. Yeah. His job is the music. At the end yeah. of the day, I mean that in the atmosphere. He's got other people that should be worried about that kind that's of right. stuff. Yeah. That's right. It, it really, it really. I mean, when you when you think about it, if, if I had to think about, it, let's just say I was a promoter of that show. I was. I am Live Nation. Right. That is my fault. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. When wow. you have somebody of his caliber, right? And I mean, you know, all the novelties yeah. and stuff are fine. That's part of yeah. the, the show. That's artistic expression. It's it's being a it's it's people communicating with you and understanding you, you understanding them, and you're giving them some an experience, right? From from a a logistical standpoint. We sit down and we do, we're we drawing out something of this magnitude right. because of this individual and the amount of people that he moves. That he's going to draw. That's right. We have to have coverage. Right. And every element. We have to be aware yeah. of the demographic. We have to be aware of, in, in, in we, I mean, we have to run through scenarios. Right. You know, me and the team, we have to say, okay, y'all, if something happen. breaks this out in happen. the middle right. of this, how are we going to navigate? Yes. Now, what, what starts to happen is... You start to to be able to go on some of the data and the research from previous shows and stuff like that, right? To say that okay, we think we kind of got it covered. Yeah, right. This, this, is, this is an annual event. Right. Like it's the right. first one. That's, right. that's what I was about to say, and, and and it's so it's so unique because this was a particular type of show. Right. Him being home. Yes. Him being uh uh getting these particular uh, certification. I mean, not certification, but recognitions. Right. Uh, from the city from and the city. Yes. You know uh, the, the the baseball celebrity thing, the, just right. all the things that were going. It was it was this big experience. It's a welcome home, right? Yes. Yeah, you can't have you a have homecoming. To, you have right. to almost yeah. double up on what you would normally do, right? Yeah. Yeah. Then who y'all think they're the hiring to be the security at this event? A, t- a twenty year old kid making twelve bucks an hour. How much is that person really going to care about yeah. getting yeah. in the mix of something and, like and, that? Yeah. Right. And you know, right. John, exactly you brought up a, a really good point. So we're not talking about people who are uh, trained necessarily in law enforcement yeah. and uh, uh, trained to, to handle situations if they if they break out. You're talking about yeah. somebody that you could put the shirt on and it has security on the back yeah. and uh, basically to look as a deterrent. Yeah. And, right. and I, I will say this, as I was there, it was hundreds of police officers there and yeah. hundreds of ambulance, uh, well, yeah. whatever yeah. 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 it was. Yeah. The, yeah. It was a lot there. Yeah. It just wasn't in the right space at the right time. That's right. Wow. That's I'm right. saying because okay. even if you were trying to drive around that day, it was a police car on every entrance. Right. With police, it was probably 500 police officers there or more. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, we touched on this a little bit, but I'm gonna throw this question out there, gentlemen. Do you think that production companies or you've already kind of touched on this? So I think it's kind of universal um, that you don't necessarily feel that an artist needs to bear 
the responsibility for that? Or in, in part, should an artist bear any of that responsibility? Should uh, Travis Scott possibly have um, predicted that some of this could happen? Or do you think maybe he felt like, well, he's got people paid to take care of it if it does? No, I don't think you could predict, nah. predict that. Yeah, I don't think you could predict that. That's, yeah. that's, that's too much of a, of a response. Not, right. And they prepared for something. You know what I'm saying? They yeah. prepared for people to pass out. They had, right. I saw at least 10 uh, yeah. medical, like actual ambulances. Right. This yeah. before anything happened. I'm yeah. like, they ain't got a lot of ambulances. Right. Yeah. You know they saying? must be expecting yeah, something. They, yeah. they know people going to be passing out. People yeah. going to be getting hurt. They just not expecting it of that magnitude. Yeah. Right. And, and yeah. you don't expect that. Yeah. You know, uh, you don't expect it to be fatal. Well, let me say this. The responsibility of an artist is to make sure that people come have a great experience right. when they are able to return home. Absolutely. That, that's that's it. So he did not, uh, what is the word? Um, he did not, like, tan like he did not entice people. Right. Like, um, intentionally. Exactly. You know, they're like, I want everybody in here to just knock somebody off the head. You know, it's not, <laughs> you know, it's it's like it's, yeah. it's it's a and even when you think of the mosh pit, I'm gonna go back to that a little bit. Yeah. You know, even when I've when I've watched his mosh pit, right, and the things that have occurred at previous shows, it's kind of rhythmic, y'all. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, what I'm saying it's yeah. like, it, I, I mean, is they is they I've jump jumping, like yeah, that. jumping, yeah, pushing, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. they just wild. If you yeah, had to yeah, isolate yeah. the event or something, yeah, it's like why yeah. somebody bust somebody upside the head like that. Yeah. It's like. No, you know, it's probably not until the next morning. He's like, damn, I think I broke my jaw, you know, yeah. like, yeah. and it may be because, you know, they were kind of infused by drugs means. or something right. like that. But right. the biggest thing about it is it's literally their experience. They're right. You know, I, I'm a moneymaker. Right. I believe in the moneymaking aspect of right. it. But that ain't nothing I do physically. Yeah. But hey, if y'all want it and it's supply and demand, we're gonna make it happen. Okay. I want to make sure that we are we're responsible about it. Right. But at the same time, it's just something that they do. And it, it is definitely generational. It is right, right. It is it is genre oriented. But yeah, that the mosh pit thing is it they're, they're doing something. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? I, I can't say what the something is, but they're doing something. And or is it dangerous? Yes. yes. Can somebody get hurt? Yes. That's why they got gurneys everywhere, right? Yeah. So it is something that is really, really crazy. And he's right. Those are ragers. Right. But but at some point, when the people fainted, based on the heat from the pyrotechnics right. or the heat of the amount, mass amount of people, right. and yeah. somebody falls down, and the raging of something that's probably going right. on. He's right. There's a way to be able to tell that you're stepping on somebody. Right. Yeah. But in its own way, the the, um, the things I read today when it talked about the autopsies from yes. the people that fainted, that were trampled. Right. Did they faint from heat exhaustion? Right. Did, or did they faint from somebody injecting them or something? So they still right. don't know that part. Right. Because they don't know how far that injecting thing went. Right. And mm -hmm. when those people are down on the ground and all the raging that's going on, you know, people are... Right. It, it, it's all a part. It sounds really crazy. I'm listening to myself. But it's all but a part of the experience. Yeah. And I, let me say this. When you're looking at the mosh pit, yeah, you can see the ground because they, they be like, clear the mosh pit. Yeah. And they be like, go. And then everybody jump. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. You see? See, guys, it's a generational thing yeah. here. Okay. Okay, Pop, you got to tell me. And John, jump in because we talked about this a little bit last night when I was talking. So tell me. So that mosh pit isn't just something that happens. The mosh pit is uh, a it's, set up. It, it's not set up, but it's people there that know they finish. It's organic. Like, yeah. They know it. It's like they do it it's a certain course. area of the crowd. You, it's going to feel the vibe. Like I said, your spider sense is going to be tingling in that area. Like, oh, it's it ain't a little rowdy over yeah, here. It's, it's, it's about to go down. Right. Yeah. And they gonna start pushing, and you gonna. But they're aware. Right. They're aware enough that when someone says clear the mosh pit, because that means it's already going, and then they finna like play a yeah. new song. Yeah, it's like they, they like finna turn them up. They like hold like on, we finna turn up. It's like a reset. Yeah, but okay. let me say what did what they what I've seen from what they said they were saying. All right, when Drake came out and Travis Scott, yeah, everybody there like. Every crowd, every concert you ever go to, if you sit in the front and everybody still pilot, you're like, all right, child, all on me. Yeah. yeah. But if it's 50,000 people Imagine. and you, you in the do. middle and you, yes, oh, uh, we can't even move. Right. That's right. the where people were passing out and yeah. falling. Claustrophobia. To the point where 
Now they done fell. I might have stepped on somebody, but the crowd going so crazy, I can't even stop to help. Them. Right. That's what right. they were saying. But I'm like, I that's why I'm glad I went up because I'd have been like, everybody stop. I'd be, <laughs> right. Yeah. I'd be, I'd be, I, I, yeah. I wouldn't have let it go. And, and that still would have been different. Yeah. yeah. With that amount yeah. of people. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know, you know, it's almost like going against um going against the the, the grain. Yeah, like yeah, imagine yeah. imagine people's stuff. If you if you try it, almost it, like we all know, we all went to the ocean. Yeah. You see how the wave yeah, gets yeah, you in the ocean, you it, can't right. not go that well, way. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And if you I I think about it like this, if you've ever been in a car that's broken down and you're trying to push that car just the weight of that car pushing against you yeah, yeah. and don't try to push it up a hill yeah, yeah. That's, so that's exactly yes I mean. yes and, it, and, and you feel exactly, helpless yeah. 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 That, so exactly so i it. feel like that is possibly what was going on in right. that area where right. they were not the back not the front right that little piece where they so yeah. squished up trying yeah. to watch drake and travis scott that right it's hot Fires everywhere. Wow. Can, can, can we talk about something that's that's that's, that's, that's kind of probably taboo to be able to talk about? But I think What's it's that? Very important. What's that? The the trauma. Well, hang on one second oh, because bad. we're gonna get no. Hang on, we're gonna yeah. get to that. I'm reading but this book. I'm glad. Right now. <laughs> I'm glad yeah. that you. I'm glad that you all touched on that simply because I wanted you to sort of explain what the setup is actually like because for those of us who have not experienced that. For you to say this is not something that in every square inch of that of that reliant field out there, mm-hmm. not reliant, the NRG field, that parking lot, it was not absolutely just crowded. For you to say that it w- there were certain areas that it was just like a carnival yeah. situation. Yeah, it wasn't all crowded. Yeah. Okay, that's that's interesting because based on what is reported you would think that it was just but it's a lot of like i'm saying it wasn't crowded but it's fifty thousand people there. Yeah, yeah. yeah 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 it's, it's, it's crowded but it's yeah. just areas where you could be chilling and you ain't in the, the you know what I'm saying? let me throw this out there john in hindsight how do you think we could have well not not in hindsight but yes in hindsight how do you think this type of tragedy could be prevented going forward well for one for the young kids the parents a little bit i mean you think you're about that life going in the middle of that kind of thing the kids that's where they're maybe it's first second concert maybe they haven't yeah, been too experienced in that and this that's is a different right. beast and they run in there thinking they're all having a great time and all of a sudden like you said they're getting kind of trapped in there yeah uh, so for one i would say that for the young kids uh and then otherwise kids in college things like that um th- at that point you're kind of on your own you know what i mean it's uh you gotta kind of just be aware yeah um i mean i'm sure Probably, ah, man, it's not going to stop people other concerts, from going. Yeah, yeah, that's. People there's got to be a little bit of self. It's kind of on that person somewhat to recognize <laughs> a bad situation if they're in one. I right. get that, and then personal responsibility. And then otherwise, yeah. I would just say beef up as much as you can in terms yeah. of the staffing. But right, how good is that? I don't know. Fifty thousand people. How can you even staff for that? Before. Right, and yeah. Pop, Pop just right. said something that was that was very interesting, and it's something that never crossed my mind. And that is for people who are who are ragers and who look for this type of event for something like that to happen that's so on the edge just like that they can't wait for the next one yeah, travis got album finna drop utopia it's gonna go crazy nuts it's gonna go crazy yeah. wow pop how can we event a tra- a tragedy like that from happening how can we again? prevent a tragedy like that yeah i say i'm just surprised that never happened before because, I mean, I, I remember looking at, like, YouTube video of Michael Jackson in Bucharest. People right. is passing out left and right. Right. And people going crazy. It's, yeah. So this is nothing new. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I mean, you know, you know, let's, I mean, call, call, it, call it what it is. I mean, there, there are young people that are fanatics about Travis. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it's, it's, it's a fanatical uh, experience. You know. Right. Um, I mean, you all, you know, have met, you know, some, some people that mm. you've, you know, kind of admired in the uh, entertainment industry and, you know, you are able to keep your head, you know what I'm saying? But there are some people who that, that, that tangibility of that person being right in front of you. Yes. For the, for some people is just, you know, it, it kind of blows their psyche a little bit. And, uh, you know, I mean, again, it is, it, it's a fanatical experience that some people just, you know, kind of lose it on and, or, with the uh, the promotion and advertisement of um you know youtube and things of that nature i mean they they see it and they and and, and they build an appetite to eventually want to experience that 
yeah. and knowing that it was going to be right here in some of their city and their right. people that could get here, you know, easily. Right. They all decided to come and 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 unfortunately, you know, what happened was was something that overshadowed the entire experience. Mm. And I guess on some level with this event and other events, because what I saw on the news the other day is that just like you said, this isn't the first or the last time something like this had happened. Mm. And they referred back to, I believe it may have been, I'm thinking that was Rolling Stones in 1973, a similar situation and 11 people died. Yeah. Oh yeah. And yeah. so it's not going to be the first or the last time right. something like this happens, but in a sense, do we have to almost take a buyer beware stance and and say if i'm going out here i'm going to do everything within my power to make myself as safe as i can be make sure i got on the right shoes make sure i have maybe some clothing that's got a little extra padding in it make sure i go with uh with a group you know how can people um, make sure that they are as safe as they can be. Now, you guys tell me if you feel like this is appropriate or not. But one thing that I did, I had a conversation with my students day before yesterday because they were crushed when they came to school on Monday mm -hmm. because some of their friends had been out there. And some of their friends, the, the young lady that was from Heights High School was from East Houston. And a lot of my, my students knew the young lady. She's only 16 years old. And I said, guys, let me tell you something. I don't think anybody is out, out there is saying to you that we don't want you to be able to go to concerts and we don't want you to be able to have a good time. Right. No one is saying that because you will be able to do these things. But there are some things that we can do That's right. to mitigate the occurrence of us maybe ending up being the victim. And, and you guys tell me if you agree with this or not. And and pop, you've got you've got a son and a daughter who are cl quickly coming up on that age. Yeah, when my daughter gonna, twelve. Yeah, she could have been there for sure. Yeah, exactly. So I said, guys, let me tell you this. Number one, when you go to something like that, you don't ever go to something like that. Try to go in a group. Try not to be by yourself when you go yeah. to something like that. Number two, make sure that every person has a cell phone. Every person needs to have a cell phone. And my and and my kids, my my students were going, well, yeah, yeah. I said, but the thing about it is it's not just to have a cell phone to take selfies. When you get there and you're in a group, every person take a picture of everyone in your group individually with each camera. So that if you are separated, if something happens, you know how to tell an authority that this is who we're looking for this oh, is what yeah. they have on this is uh this is the age of this person and if you need to share that with the media be able to share that that's a safety measure number three after the concert you call your parents individually and let them know that you're okay they don't need to hear it from someone else they need to hear it from you they need to hear your voice and and more than anything else stay you know have a designated meeting place if you do get separated say okay this is gate number four after you know if we get separated we're all going to meet here at gate number four and we're going to count each other so there are ways that even a parent sending their their child to a concert or their student to a concert that you can ensure a little a little bit of safety and know that your 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 loved one knows how to respond right. in the event of an emergency situation because it happened so that means it can happen again that's right so what are what are some of the things that you think um someone could do to make sure that they kind of ensure their own safety honestly when i was a teenager we went to parties that were dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> Almost probably more dangerous than Travis Scott. <laughs> We have to do all that. So I, yeah. I just feel like that's almost like a given. Like when you go somewhere, if you don't got a phone, nowadays it's, it's rare somebody not going to have a phone. I'll just say make sure it's charged up. And make your phone a safety. A yeah, safety. most parents got their uh, right. kids' uh, uh, location. Right. But, I mean, just... Bro, like I say, use your common sense. If you look, if you in a crowd you, yeah. and you look like that ain't where you need to be, you're gonna be able to tell. Man, you <laughs> around there. You ain't, right. We not nowhere to try to be cool or be something we not. Just right. be what you are. Cause if you ready to be pushing people, if you five to a hundred 
pounds, you don't need to be in that crowd trying to push yeah. people around. That ain't for you. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's true. That's right. true. Carl, safety? Yeah, I, I mean, um, I mean, I, I agree with you. I think that you know, young people are really not thinking like that, but that's that's mm -hmm. good. That's that's a that's a parental thing to to just kind of go over and over a little bit with you know your young person uh, because you know the the excitement of being there. I mean, they're, they're not even thinking in that organized thought, mm -hmm. but it's but it's great. I mean, it's, right. it's I think it's a great thing that probably needs to be on a pamphlet or something. Right. You know, as they're coming in, make sure, you know, but, um, mm -hmm. but for the most part, you know, I also believe like, you know, pop man, I'm, I'm like, listen, I've been to so many events yeah. that it was probably <laughs> anything could have went down, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, I, but I think that, you know, you know, each patron, you know, knows the responsibility they have at an event, you know, unless right. they are, you know, antagonized or put in right. a position where they got to you know, defend kinda, themselves. Yeah. yeah. Then, it, then something like that may go down. But for the most part, it's, you know, People just really having a great time, and we're all brought together by this one thing that we share, which is this guy and his music. Right, you right. know what I'm saying. So yeah. that this this is this is a bridge, it's a conduit now. Right, you know what I'm saying. It connects us. I don't know this girl, I don't know this guy, this guy, but at the end of the day, we all like we music. all connected because yo, we like that. And when right. the jam drop, you know, we all feel it the same way or in our own way. Right, and that and that's how we're connected. But when you have you know somebody that that is doing something that is you know intentionally going to you know, shift the whole aspect of what we're all here for. Right. That's those, those are dangerous. Those yeah. are the people that are culprits. You know what I'm saying? Right. So if if it's true that you know somebody was going around and they were injecting people or something and they yeah, that's crazy. that that person we need yeah, to get to the bottom they, of yeah, it. Yeah they need to chair. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. So John. Yeah safety measures. Safety. I mean when you were just saying all the stuff you said about parent parental basically advice. So yeah. to say that's all great and everything like that. Kids aren't really thinking about that. But yeah. your mind kind of goes toward what can the the security team or the concert kind of organizers, things like that. What can they do? Mm. At the very least, maybe, yeah. I don't know if there was this, but metal, you know, on your way in, kind of get everybody patting down, metal things right. like that, kind of empty the pockets. That yeah. can maybe get some of those, I don't know, with that syringe, something like that. Right. Right. Somebody with, like, maybe you could have found that there. I mean, I don't know how practical that is for 50,000 people. Right. But right. Um, that's kind of where my mind goes, kind of at least what yeah. they can do, maybe an extra step right. outside of what maybe yeah. parent tells you. That's true. Well, guys, we're almost getting ready to wrap things up and i want to throw this out there to you because this is what is a concern of to me i am a person who believes in these generations coming along right now mm -hmm. because they are going to hold the key to whatever laws whatever um uh, things are going to direct our lives as we move further into the 21st century Agreed. can they be saved or is this a lost cause can we depend on them can we depend on them to move us socially, politically, economically in the direction that we need to go, given this type of behavior? What are y'all's thoughts on that? All right. I think it's, I, I got two things. That people that are older, they're supposed to be able to look and see and know that the people that are younger than them, that they are going to see things they won't get to see. Right. But that the people that are younger than them will also see things that they won't get to see. Right. And, and every year no matter probably in the 1930 they was like all oh, them young people be tripping right you know what i'm right. saying so it, was every day. Day. Yeah, it ain't I, I don't ever I think that people are just like all oh, these young people are gonna lead us but you know they say yes so the youth shall lead so right. these yes. pe these are the people that we have to depend on and they are more politically inclined to get yes. active more than ever yes. but they just have to mature into their position i don't right. think that people are going to be ready probably in the next three or four voting cycles don't say that Come on I now, we can that, get them ready. We can get them, can get them ready, ready, but it, it's gonna take a whole lot of a whole it lot, and it, it really don't matter who said it. They had Jay Z and Diddy promoting vote or die. I remember yeah. the first time I voted was for Obama. I was excited to vote. Yeah, but after that, I wasn't excited to vote no more. It was just because it was the first time for Obama. Yeah. They need right. somebody that they can relate to, that look okay. like them, that they can feel, and people to get more involved. Else, we're gonna be, you know, like I say, politically dead. Cause we're not going to understand that we have a voice in the eyes of the law. And then people got to start making bigger impact. Okay. You know what I'm saying period before they even decide to, to, to take a step toward right. running so people can know who they are already. Like you. Yeah. 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 Okay. A lot of people okay. Now John <laughs> only, they said only 51% uh, of eligible people 39 and under voted in the last election cycle. 51% of eligible. So that means people who were registered. Registered, yeah. Well, you're what, talking what nationally, we we're saying? Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, it ends up being 
you had two 70 something year old white guys yeah. standing there. And I mean, I don't know if anybody particularly fired up by either one of those dudes, <laughs> but I mean, they were, didn't, didn't exactly spark up any yeah. great energy um, from anyone. Right. Um, that and uh, man, you got to make some kind of things that are going to tangibly yeah. affect their lives, right? What do yeah. young people care about right now? Those kids are out of college age, something like that. They want to get a, a solid job. job. Yeah. What do kids want when they get a job? They want, at least nowadays, a, a younger people, that, they want yeah. maybe a remote opportunity if they can have the chance to, a little more of a flexible schedule instead of yeah. your typical 8.30 to 5 type of setting. Yeah. Um, and there, for the first time in a long time, employees are kind of having the – are gaining more power in that say because right. a lot of people resign from their jobs, you know. They're not uh, necessarily going back as quickly as possible. It's making right. these companies for the first time really have to win yes. people to come work there, which yes. is going to hopefully rise the wages up and see people have an improved lifestyle. Mm -hmm. um, yes. And that's going to be, I think, the way when someone's life gets better, that's the way you can kind of hopefully yeah. motivate them to join the process. Say, hey, something's working here. <coughs> you know, and okay. Spreading that. Carl, we got about 15 seconds. Tell us. Oh, 15 seconds. Yes, Listen. yes. What and are we going to do day, to get I, these, I, I think get I, this generation? I think this generation will make it. Yes. It's still going to take us to continue to believe. Yes. And I also think that, you know, uh, like Papa said, man, it, this is generational. I mean, my, my, you know, my, when I first got introduced to rap music in 1979, 1980, my dad was like, what the hell are y'all listening to? Boy, y'all yeah. ain't going to be none. You know, that <laughs> yeah. kind of, and then here we are. Now we're, we're, now we're the generation on deck about to run the country, right? Right. Culture so, food. yeah, you yeah. know what I'm saying? So I, I think we'll make it. You know, the yeah. biggest thing I wanted to make sure we talked about, I don't know we got to get out of here, was it was uh, the the thing that people are glazing over, the right. trauma yes. that, that, uh, that, uh, that people were passing dead bodies. Yes. Yeah. These are young people. We can't get away from the right. fact that that was a traumatic thing. Absolutely. And they're, so they're, and they're very, they're again. very, in you know, uh, solid, introverted generation. And to be right. able to talk about it, let's make sure that we're available to be able to talk about it. Absolutely. Well, yeah. gentlemen, I want to thank you so much all for coming in. And like I said, we had to just kind of, kind of uh, break quorum on things and go ahead and talk about it because mm -hmm. it needed to be talked about and some understanding needed to be brought forth that if I didn't understand it, I know a lot of other people didn't. And I thank you guys for coming in and giving us, uh, you know, a little bit of enlightenment when it comes to these things. Um, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Please um, make sure that you go to crystaldillardfortexas.com. Please like my page, like me on Instagram. None of the gentlemen here, I want to make sure that I give this disclaimer. This does not mean at, at all that it is a, um, uh, they aren't necessarily endorsing me in any way, but I respect their opinion. I wanted to bring them on because I know that they could shed insight onto something that really needed to be said. Go to my page. I love your support. CrystalDillardForTexas.com. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye. I loved it. Yes.